you haven't grown up in a Hindu home, you'll probably know two things about Diwali. It's also known as the Festival of Lights, and sweets are a big part of the celebration. While that's all true, it's also a time of giving and sharing, and happy family get-togethers are all a part of the experience, with food forming a huge part of the celebration. Diwali marks the triumph of good over evil and light over darkness. It's also called the Festival of Lights, and the day is spent preparing a celebratory feast signifying abundance. I'm sharing some of the recipes I'll be making for Diwali this year. Oven baked paneer biryani to go with that, a prawn masala for the non-vegetarians and a little sweet something, coconut pistachio barfi. Let's get cooking. I'm making a fresh batch of paneer for this recipe and in a pot I've got four litres of full cream milk. I've heated this already, kept it going on a low heat and use one of these rubber spatulas just to scrape the bottom of the pan. That prevents the milk from scorching and burning. Paneer is a homemade Indian cheese. Very easy to make as long as you remember a few tips. Always use full cream milk. Secondly, keep stirring as you bring the milk up to the boil. And don't use low fat milk, otherwise you'll end up with tough, chewy paneer pieces. You've got to watch this quite closely. It can go from hot to boiled over in just a few seconds. Waiting for it to bubble up. Switch off the heat and add the vinegar. For four litres of milk, I've got 180 mils of vinegar. You use a spatula or a wooden spoon and gently work the vinegar into the hot milk. You can see the liquid starts to separate and the curd starts to float to the top. It's also a good idea to leave the curd for about 30 minutes before you start to press the moisture out. I'm going to use a spoon and gently lift the curd and pop it into a strainer. It's the last of it. You can see the liquid starts to drip through. I'm using the back of a spoon to press down to speed up the draining of the paneer. I'm going to use a tea towel, turn the cheese into the towel and try not to use a furry tea towel. I'm using my hands for this. Press the cheese together and wrap it quite neatly so you get straight sides. I'm popping this on a baking tray. And now place that pot on top. For the vegetables and the biryani, I'm starting out with a preheated pan and to that some sunflower oil. This is quite a different veg biryani. It has paneer as well. Whole spices, I'm using cinnamon, two little pieces of bay leaf and some cumin seeds. Next, in goes the onions. To that, two teaspoons of salt and add some curry leaves. Garlic. Give that a quick stir. And now the first spice going in, red chilli powder, about a tablespoon. And to that, add some chopped tomatoes. Stir the tomatoes around for the remaining spices. A teaspoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of coriander, garam masala, and turmeric. Use the back of a spoon to break down the lumps in the tomato. Add the mushrooms. I'm using a fair bit of mushrooms in this biryani. Stir the mushrooms into the spicy sauce. Mushrooms have a fair bit of moisture. I'm going to cook this for a few minutes. Got carrots and peas. To this, pour in some cream. You could also use yogurt, but I love the flavour and decadence of fresh cream. Turn off the heat and let's layer the biryani. For that, I'm using some copper bowls and I've got some rice in here already. Pour a little melted butter over the rice. And this is to prevent the rice grains from sticking. If you're trying to have a low fat meal, you could also use olive oil. Add some lentils over the rice. Some curry leaves. And for the vegetables, so about two scoops going into each serving dish. Let's check on the paneer. The 
Timmy is ready. Let's unwrap that. Take a look. Feels slightly warm. It's really fresh paneer. Slice that into blocks. Now if the paneer is too soft, leave it unwrapped in the refrigerator to dry out the excess moisture. It should firm up in about an hour. I'm going to use about four pieces of paneer per pot. Place the paneer on top of the cooked vegetables. For the final layers, a little more brown lentils. Next, rice going over. And I've tinted this rice with food colouring. Crispy fried brown onion. I've heated some saffron strands and infused it in boiled water. The saffron infusion goes in next. Melted butter. And lastly, some fresh coriander. To seal the pots, I've prepared some dough with butter, flour and cold water and work that until it's smooth. Divide it into four pieces and use a rolling pin to flatten this. You don't need to flour the work surface, the dough doesn't stick. A drop of water going around the edges, that's to moisten them. They don't have to be perfectly round and drape them over the bowls. Cover that over and gently pull the dough and press it into place. Now if you're making a non-vegetarian biryani, you would brush the dough with beaten egg. I'm going to use milk for this one. Bake your tray, place the pots onto the tray. Careful not to bump them. Pour cream milk and brush that over. Let's pop these into the oven. While the biryani is in the oven, let's start with the barfi. There's always a barfi served at Diwali and this is one of my favourite versions. For that, coconut milk going into a pan using 800 moles of coconut milk. To this, condensed milk. To that, sugar. And some butter. Bring this up to the boil and stir to combine. The mixture started to bubble up and simmer this down until it reaches a thick custard-like consistency. If the mixture is too thin, your barfi won't set. And to test if it's ready, use a teaspoon and make a line on a spatula or wooden spoon and you'll see it doesn't run. To this, add some cardamom. I love lots of cardamom in the barfi. Turn off the heat. In goes the milk powder. To this milk powder, I've added some dessert cream, left it to dry for about an hour, and then processed it until smooth, and it gives barfi that unique texture. Then just pressing down with the spatula, breaking up the lumps, a little more milk powder going in. It starts to come together almost like a soft dough. Lastly, add the icing sugar. You could tint this with a few drops of green food colouring or even pink. I'm going to leave it in its natural colour. The mixture's ready. I've got a greased and lined dish here. And have lined this with plastic wrap. This makes it easy to get the barfi out the dish. Pour the barfi mixture into the dish. Use a spoon. Lastly, chopped pistachios going on top. This is quite a soft barfi, and if you're finding your barfi isn't setting, try putting it in the freezer for a while. I'm leaving this to set in the refrigerator. Seafood's always served on my Diwali table. Let's start with the prawns. To prepare delicious prawns, keep it simple. I've preheated a pan, and to that some sunflower oil. Add some carom seeds. For this recipe, I'm using two onions and I haven't chopped them this time. I've just blitzed them until smooth in a food processor. This is going to give me a really thick sauce that's going to coat these prawns. Add some curry leaves and garlic. Stir the curry leaves and garlic into the hot oil. Just a quick stir. Add one and a half tablespoons of red chilli powder. You can spice the sapo down, even add green chilies if you like a fairly spicy version. In goes the chopped tomatoes. Add some ground cumin and coriander, a teaspoon of each. Turmeric. And use the back of a spoon to break down the lumps. 
the oil starting to separate from the tomatoes, which means they're almost done. Let's have a look at the biryani pots. Wow. This is what you want. When you tap, it should sound quite hollow. All that saffron, steam and spices are trapped into these little pots and it's going to give us the most aromatic biryani. The tomatoes have cooked down. You can see it's quite dry. Make a well in the center of the pan. Pour in a little more oil. Let that heat up. Next, the prawns go into the center. Saute the prawns in that lovely tomato paste. Turn up the heat. Prawns take about two minutes to cook. Tails are starting to curl. Add some black pepper and a few more curry leaves. Season the prawns with salt. Switch off the heat as soon as the color changes and they start to curl. The prawns are ready, the paneer biryani is ready. I'm going to get ready to plate up. The moment I've been waiting for. Use a serrated knife and I'm going to break through this crust. It's quite crispy. Slice through. And there we have it. These are some of the dishes that are going to be featuring on my Diwali table. We've got oven baked paneer biryani to go with that, spicy prawn masala and a creamy pistachio barfi. From me, happy Diwali.